Welcome back to the Mr. Showtime Podcast. And today um, is uh, the review of the Springboks versus Wales third test match. And we did it. We won. We sealed the test series. Which really for truly we should have sealed the test series the week before. Uh, during, uh, during the second test match but uh you have to make in life you have to move on you have to you know uh make the best of the moment and that's exactly what um uh the springboks did um last night okay. um first of all just before we get into the video uh there's something that uh, because um uh, on, in my timeline uh in, in south africa uh central uh, cat central african time that's the time zone we use uh, we get to see All Blacks versus Ireland play early in the morning, somewhere around 9 o'clock in South African time, uh, CAT, Central African time, right? And I, uh, I, I went to the sports bar, um, so I, I was kind of like nervous, I was asking, I, I, I walked into the bar, I saw the, us the usual uh, dudes uh, sitting there having a drink, so I was like, uh, guys, tell me the good news. Tell me the good news, please. Tell me Ireland won. And some of the guys uh, like, yeah, um, yeah, the um, Ireland won. I was like, are you serious? No, 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 hold on. In case you're pulling my leg, in case you're trolling me, let me go on YouTube and just, uh, let me just uh, uh, verify and double check. And it was true. They were right. Ireland won. They did it! <laughs> the All Blacks lost! <laughs> yeah, All Blacks fans, face in your face! <laughs> Ireland did it! They made history twice. They won in uh in all uh, in, uh, they beat the All Blacks at home. I think it was also their first time, right? And they secured their very first Test Series win uh on all on New Zealand soil. So Major props, major congratulations uh, to Ireland. You did it. It's been a long time coming, right? <laughs> Thank you, lads. Uh, it's been a good uh, test series. Qu quite frankly, I thought New Zealand was going to take it again. And, of course, Ian Foster is uh, facing a lot of pressure right now. Kind of makes you wonder whether or not they made a mistake by overlooking uh, Scott Robinson. Maybe they did make a mistake. Maybe sh they should have picked Scott Robinson instead. Anyway, um, also um, my second team that I support, England Rugby, the, the English uh, rugby team. They also won um, th their test series as well, right? For the second time, because in 2016 they won it in England and again, they beat Australia, they beat the Wallabies. So... Soon after the the uh, seeing the Irish sorry uh, seeing off soon after seeing the All Blacks versus Ireland game that Ireland won, and soon after seeing the Wallabies versus England game, seeing that England won, I was starting to get ooh, nervous. Could it be that this could be a Northern Hemisphere sweep of the Southern Hemisphere? Because at that point, it was just before the Springboks game was going to play. The Springboks versus Wales game was going to play. So I started to think to myself, yo, we cannot allow a Northern Hemisphere sweep. We have to do it. The Springboks have to turn up. Dig deep, boys, lads, Springboks, dig deep and secure the series. And they did just that. Springboks won. Now you can ask anyone who, who, uh, who was at the bar. I was very animated throughout. I was yelling, shouting, because <laughs> the pressure was there. The Springboks started the, ma the match very well. Uh, typical South African style with uh, forwards dominance, right? And to be honest, I was more impressed with the in individual brilliance rather than the overall team performance. Because if I 
give credit to the all overall team performance, that means I'll be giving credit to Jacques Nienabai and his coaching staff, which they really quite frankly don't deserve. Fine. I'll give them the credit. Congratulations, lad. Lads. Dear uh, 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 Jacques Nineba, Mzani Stick, and Dion Davids, and the other coaching staff, congratulations. Credit to you for securing the test series. Seeing that I've been criticizing you in previous videos. And rightfully so. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm not taking anything back. I still mean it. I still deem you guys, you three gentlemen, as incompetent. Because your coaching methods are weak. And even though we still won, even though we won this test series, my opinions about you haven't changed. Not in the slightest bit. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'll give you credit for this win. I'll give you credit for this win. Technically, off the basis of you won. Technically. But your coaching expertise... I don't agree with it. I don't like it. It doesn't work. It's weak. It's not going to sustain us long term to defend the Web Ellis Cup. I still think we're going to lose it. But let's talk about... Uh, let's just uh, celebrate and savor this moment, shall we? Uh, last weekend, as in like last night, last night was Ibn Elizabeth's 100th test, test match. Congratulations to you, buddy. Glad. Um, he also had his wife sing the national anthem. And the, uh, the thingy, the setup um, with um, the, the, his words, the, the, his name up in flames, Ibn 100th test match. That was very awesome. That was quite the spectacle. That was very, that, that was a, a good symbolic uh, display, with uh, Eben Eben Elizabeth had a test test match, and it was all up in flames. That was very, um, that was quite the spectacle, right? And also congratulations to Bongin Bonambi for his fiftieth fiftieth uh, test match, right? But it's funny because. The overall performance of the team just it just brought that passion because uh, uh, have you noticed a lot of matches where each Springbok had their hundred test match or their fiftieth test match they it, it, it tends to be matches where the Springbok lost <coughs> such as <coughs> sorry excuse me such as the match in two thousand fourteen or fifteen where Brian Habana had his 100th test match, it was, and it was against the Wallabies. We lost that match. And Jean de Villa's 100th test match against the All Blacks. We lost that match. So I was thinking, no, we can't have, you know, our Springbok veterans having their milestone moments where they lose the match. Let's get a win. Let's get a win under our belts, and they they did. The, the the guys did it last night. They won. Eben won his hundred test match. Bongi Bonambi won his his fiftieth test match, and they deserve it. They really deserve it. I was emotional yesterday because uh, I, I felt so happy for Eben Elizabeth and Bongi Bonambi. Also, the biggest talking point of all. Oh yeah, um, Ibn Elizabeth got man of the match well deservedly. Um, Sia Kulisi brought that fire, right? But in my personal opinion, the biggest talking point of all. He wasn't him, he, this time around. He wasn't man of the match. But his performance and his form was rating at like ten out of ten. Damien Willemsa, Bayer Minir, you played spectacular. You played, you played a perfect match yesterday. I would like to live off. I would like to... Damien Willemsa, yeah, she's... Right now, yeah, she's... You're on fire right now. Keep that up. 
and guys, Damien Venomson has secured his spot. He, he's re- secured his gravitas, his respect in the Springbok jersey. And you know when that moment happened? It happened in the uh, first test match against uh, against Wales. The, the, the first tests, uh, test series uh, versus Wales. When he kicked... Not only when he kicked the the, 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 the match winning penalty, but his performance overall when he came on to replace Elton Yankees. That's when he really secured his place on the uh, in the Springboks Spog squad. Because <clears throat> prior, before, Elt, um, um Damon Willemsa, prior, Damon Willemsa was part of the Springbok setup, part of the uh, World Cup winning squad. But he didn't play. He only played against the softer teams like Italy and Namibia. He didn't really get a chance. In and even in 20, 2021, he didn't really get a chance. There was times where he got an injury. He was out on injury, and he didn't really get a chance to really express himself and really prove himself to be worthy of a A side Springbok side. And I think during uh, this uh, this test series against Wales, he's had a perfect chance to prove it, and he did not disappoint. He impressed. He has proven to himself to be worthy. Damien Willemsa, you have proven yourself to be worthy. Minir, how Jalil, how your His aerial skills are perfect. Him, uh, him uh, retain those aerial balls. His kicking is perfect. His uh, uh, running game is perfect. He almost scored a try uh, with that uh, with that box kick, and then he regathered. If he wasn't tackled by Dan Bigger, he would have scored immediately. And he had enough uh, wherewithal, enough skill to immediately place the ball down, and then he picked it up again. And then he got you know Dan Bigger didn't release him. That takes some you know some wit. To, to, to able to recognize the rules of the game and, and, and act in a witty fashion. So he places the ball down and he picks it up immediately, but Dan, he, he, uh, and he got us a penalty because Dan Bigger, he didn't release him uh, in time. He was still holding on to him. And you got a penalty and we were able to kick some, some points over. That's some, you see, that's some individual brilliance right there. That's some improv. That's some, you know, playing the situation. Not this robotic coaching style. Okay, get the ball, box kick, uh. and then we, when you try to catch the ball, we knock it on, or we just kick it away completely without putting any pressure. But yesterday, the box kicking was again. I, I, I'm not a fan of Jacques Nipper, Jacques Nipper's box kicking, but yesterday the execution was a little bit better. Jaden Henderson's kicking, his execution is a little bit better than Fafti Clax. Because although we're still criticizing the whole box kicking thingy, but at least we're able to retain the ball. Makas only Mapimpi was able to contest the ball fairly, fairly well. So we're able to retain the ball often. Although we're doing the box kicks, we, we retain the ball. We put some pressure. That worked in our, in our favor. And we saw a very aggressive uh, pick and drive, pick and drive, pick and drive by our forwards. Uh, in the in, in, in the uh, in, in the in the first half, also in the second half, um, Andre Pollard also uh, played a little bit uh, better. Um, like I said, the execution from the guys was just better. Uh, another thing, Jasper Jasper uh, Jasper Visa is not our eighth man. He's not our eighth man. He keeps dropping the balls on the aerial ta- aerial attacks. I would much rather have you know Dwayne Vermeulen back, even though his form is also in question. But just just to be conservative, let's have Dwayne Vermeulen back, or let's take a risk with Ivan Ross. Now to be fair. A lot of the guys that played that played in the second uh, test match, they didn't really get to prove themselves. The game plan was off. It, it's it's not so much as us criticizing the the team, 
the inexperienced team because you know Jacques made too many changes and we pay the price. I still uh, would like to see a lot of those guys play again. I like I'd still like to see th th those inexperienced guys get a chance. Guys like Marvin Ori, Jaden Hendrickson. Uh, Cheslin Colby got a little uh, injury fracture on his jaw. Um, that's concerning. I hope he, hope he wasn't too bad because I saw him bleed on his mouth and was like, okay. But that could spell an opportunity for um, Kirtley uh, uh, Aronsa to, you know, uh, 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 with, the rap, uh, uh, with the rugby championships. So I would still like to see some of the guys, the inexperienced guys, still get a chance. I would still like to see Marcel Couture come back. He's not a youngster. He's he's a very he's a veteran. But anyway, um, I still my feelings have not changed about the Springbok uh, coaching staff. Those three gentlemen, particularly Jacques Nineve, you guys are still under uh, criticism. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll just enjoy the win for now, right? I don't want to be too critical, right? Uh, um, let, let's just enjoy. And save at the moment. We won the test series, even though we should have won all three test matches. But anyway, that's how life goes. Uh, you take risks. You can you can go either way, right? But um, upcoming next is the rugby championships in a couple of weeks from now, and we're gonna be playing the All Blacks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now we'll see what I've been criticizing all along. Quote me on that. Quote me on that. We lost the number one uh, world ranking. Now we're ranked at number three. I'm not too hung up on that. I'm just... Uh, my main focus is the game plan and execution. All right. Uh, again, the kicking whole kicking game thing. I'm still not a fan of it, but it was better this time around. The execution was better. Now the thing is with me. One more, one more talking point. Why is it that with SA rugby, we have to come amongst immense pressure for us to perform well? Why not do this on a regular? Hey, why not play like this on a regular? As opposed to us waiting to be under pressure and then only then we're putting in a A-grade performance when we're under pressure. How about doing this often, Jock? How about playing every single match with urgency? And with intent to score and win. Not just playing to survive, not just playing to, you know, hold them off. No, no, no. Play to win. Uh, clock on as many uh, sc uh, sc score points as you can. That's how the All Blacks do it. Whether, they, whether the All Blacks are playing England or the Springboks or a team as weak as Italy or, the, or Scotland, they will clock on as many points as they can. They'll clock on as many points as they can. And what the problem with uh, Springbok rugby is we tend to underestimate certain teams. We tend to take certain teams for granted. And that's how we lost to Japan. That's how we lost to Italy, you know, back in 2016. We take things for granted depending on who we play. That's our, kind of our downfall. And then only then we have this slogan that, oh, a wounded Bok team is a strong Bok team. <laughs> well, it's funny how in 2017... The All Blacks, they dismantled that narrative completely when they beat us 57 points to nil. But anyway, hey, listen, I just want to see proper execution. I want to see variation in attack. Not this whole kicking scoping yach thingy. Play differently with every team. Change the game plan for every team so that that way you won't become predictable. Right? But anyway, that's my thoughts for now. Um, let's. Just, uh, um, I'll give the Springbok uh, coaching staff credit for this one, just for this one, just for this uh, particular uh, match for winning the Test series. Credit to you. I'll, I'll give credit where credit is due. But again, overall, I I, I, I still don't. Uh, I I rank you very low in terms of your coaching expertise. But anyway, that's my um, 
review of uh, the Springbok test series uh, we wanted, right? But uh, Springbok's coaching staff, you're still under criticism. And that's going to be proven in the rugby championships when we face the All Blacks. Oh, yeah.